was not Bristol. <laughs> um, welcome. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and the obvious uh, that happened this last weekend. So, welcome. We're back in the studio. Switch things around a little bit. Got a little farther away from all, trying to get a little depth. We're, we're just messing. We're going to keep messing with the studio. Going to keep messing with it, okay? Um, yeah. Last weekend was Bristol Motor Speedway. And um, I would have been alive a little bit a little a little, little bit ago, but I've been doing some stuff around the house. Uh, I had to get a project done for the wife. So we finished that up before we went live. Okay. Um, if you don't want to hear about Bristol Motor Speedway, tonight is probably not the night <laughs> to tune in. I'm not going to lie to you. But the cool part is, I have some videos to show you guys. I have some really amazing photos to show you guys too um, from Bristol and some stuff to talk about. So yeah, um, the video we started out with there was from Springport a couple of years ago. Um, that was a race with the National Compact Touring Series and I was passing for the lead um, with three to go or so in the first segment, two to go or so, uh, in the first segment, it was a dual, uh, segment race when the right rear broke off. Um, I have had the right rear break off, uh, all the way back in 2010, uh, when I was at Kalamazoo Speedway, um, <laughs> for Call of the Wild, uh, I was not in the lead. I was running ninth. Uh, but I was against a bunch of V8s and stuff with the sideboard and that. So um, those are the few times that I have had the right rear uh, break on me. Until we went to Bristol. Um, so if you don't already know, if you haven't already seen, um, I uh, I took the lead on like lap seven at Bristol. With the best car I've ever had. With the car we ran third in practice and fourth in qualifying without ever getting a single good lap. Um, took the lead. Clearly. Um, I took the lead going into turn one. And the right rear snapped off going into turn three. So the fun part is, is that I was about that far from officially leading the lap before. So I didn't actually officially, <laughs> on the scorecard, lead Bristol. Um, but there's video, there's pictures, and there's evidence <laughs> that I managed to take a Dodge Neon, which you guys ever ask the internet, what uh what you should build for uh uh front wheel drive neon some of us will say neon but they're usually not the thing to say but i took a dodge neon to the lead at bristol motor speedway and there's no one else in the world who can say that so that's pretty fucking cool <laughs> um now, let's back up a little bit and talk about just the weekends. Um, the first thing I have to do is I have to say thank you to my parents. Um, it was my dad's car that I was driving this last weekend down at Bristol. Um, without my dad giving me the opportunity to drive his race car, um, I would not have been, I would not have raced at Bristol. Um, I did not have time. I did not have the money. I did not have the time to get um, my new car ready or to get my old car ready. Um, Doc is not safe for those kind of speeds, so we would not have taken it. Um, so without my dad giving me the opportunity to drive his car, I would not have raced Bristol. Um, they paid for a good portion of the trip. Um, I did pay. Part of the stuff, you know, I don't, don't think this was a free ride. Um, I did pay for a lot of stuff, pay for my own hotel, that kind of things. Um, we started working on the car. Um, 
uh, no, no, do not, um, do not restart right now. Holy crap. The computer was just like, Hey, you should restart windows. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but I, uh, dad, dad fell, uh, months ago and really screwed his shoulder up and had to have rotator cuff surgery. So dad was out at Bristol. Um, so dad did not, Dad did not step aside for me to race. Um, Dad just allowed me to race his car, which would not have went to Bristol otherwise. Um, and I want to show you guys this badass picture. Um, this is by KG Media on Facebook. Um, I'm going to make a post sharing the any, any, any people I get pictures or videos from. I'll be sharing an appreciation post. Which, by the way, if any of you have a picture of me in the lead not throwing sparks... Please message me the link or the picture. I would greatly appreciate that. <laughs> um, but this is, this was actually, I was live with you guys when this picture was taken. Uh, this is when we went out to get the picture taken uh, on the track out by the Bristol Motor Speedway out on the backstretch. Um, I was actually live and I had to go around again a second time because I didn't know what was going on. And I pulled down into the picture of the Pennsylvania guys. And so I made a second lap around and I went ahead and went up by the um, wall. And that's when this picture was taken. So this was not at speed. Uh, that's why the window net wasn't up. Like I was just, I looked like this with a hat on. Um, but this is a car. This is at Bristol. This was the picture. Um, by the way, there's at least 70 of you. Hit the like button for me if you would. It's the only thing I ask of you guys. The only thing I ask of you guys, right? Um, but this was to get our picture taken. So I have this badass photo by KG Media uh, that was shared by Horsepower Happenings. Um, so uh, I want to back this up slightly farther. We did a show last Thursday from Michael Waltrip Brewing, which was pretty awesome. I got to say thank you to Michael. See him. Uh, we got to talk to Mr. Don Rufner. We got to talk to Mr. Honius. Uh, we talked to Dan Redman really quick. I had a really, 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 really big plans for that show. Um, and they all fell apart. Uh, and they fell apart quickly. And this little guy is why. Um, I have, so what I'm talking to you guys on now, I've got my good microphone. I just have a Go XLR Mini, and it just has a single input. Um, so it works really great for this. This is my Zoom H4N Pro. I got this when I bought that camera. Um, this has two XLR inputs, and it has a external mic input. So I could run both of my XLR microphones, and I could run the Rode microphone. So we could have talked to four people at once. Um... I want to show you guys why uh, we couldn't do that. This button over here on the side doesn't turn it on like it's supposed to. And every one of my plans at that show revolved around this handling the audio. Um, we adapted, we overcame. Uh, I was going to use this. The reason we had two camera angles is because I had planned on um, using my phone as an audio input. I was going to use the second uh, microphone so we could have this microphone and a couple others. And it was going to work great. And the cam the phone wouldn't pick that up. And so we just resorted to I plugged in my Rode uh, wireless go tos, uh, my little microphone. I was wearing the lav mic and we just plugged that into my go XLR. So that way I had at least two microphones. Um, so that's why the audio wasn't great. And that's why it was a half hour later starting. I actually was early. We were there 20 minutes early for me to set up. And had this Zoom worked, we would have started at five o'clock. And I think we'd have had a really great show. Uh, Don Rufner did an amazing job coming on talking to me. Bill Honies did too. Um, Dan was running around <laughs> like a chicken. Uh, his head got off, uh, and, and even he did great. But I won't lie to you guys. I was really embarrassed uh, with how amateur all of that was um, because I'm sitting there watching Racing America carry like seven totes in, and there's, they were just waiting for me. I was in their way. Um, it, it was my space. They had an hour after me, um, you know, Pub about broke podcast was set up in another room and they had all their professional equipment set up. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys now, um, that won't happen again. I have a couple pieces of equipment that I really want to get, um, that will handle that for me. So if we're ever in a situation like that again, where we're out live where we can set up to do a live show like that, we will be set up to have four XLR microphones, headphones, 
the mixer that I want to get, we will do better. Um, it won't happen again. So I'm sorry that show didn't go how I wanted it to. I'm sure, I'm sure most of you didn't care. Um, but I do, I really do that. That bothered the shit out of me. Um, that was not what I wanted. So now getting into Friday, uh, we went over and, uh, unloaded the car and I talked to a bunch of people, a bunch of people. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to reconnect with people. Um, Realized it was getting late in the day, and so I went to hurry up and throw on the Heim Joint Control Arms, which we did go live. We did go walk around as people were coming in, so we got to see a little bit of the cars and people, um, and we did go live when we went and got our picture taken. Um, I had planned on walking around with the camera and talking to some people, and I'm like, oh, crap, I really need to throw these control arms or these Heim Joints in these arms real quick uh, in the rear because the they were really, um, really bad. Uh, they were wore out really, really bad. So... Uh, in doing so, I had to swap out the lever or spindle, uh, and it took a lot longer than I thought. And by that time, everybody had left. So we didn't get any video that day, but we were all set up. Car was ready to go for Saturday. Um, and I had told you guys and gals that me racing was priority number one. Uh, and it was, it, it, it really, really was. Um, so Saturday rolled around and we got to the track bright and early, um, got the car on the trailer put some fuel in it, looked it over and tighten everything up and went up and had a driver's meeting. And I informed everybody that, uh, Hey, uh, I'm here with the front wheel drive shop. We are an authorized, um, uh, dealer for receivers. So, which by the way, I need to do this. There we go. Uh, <laughs> um, we are an authorized race receiver dealer and I have new race receivers and I have the mounts if you guys need them. And I have headphones and I have, you know, like I have stuff here. Um, cause I do stock a lot of that stuff. And so, uh, meeting got over and we had about a half hour to get ready to go out. And I had like four guys come over <laughs> to buy things for me. So as we were getting around, um, managed to get those guys hooked up, uh, and to help a few people, which we're going to do, we're going to do a short little segment one of these nights on how to set up your race receiver and do some stuff with it. Um, but we went out for practice and I was one of the last guys to get up there, which doesn't bother me because we were all going to get about the same amount of time and went out for the first little bit for about eight laps or so. And i had been telling myself, um, for weeks that we were throwing caution in the wind and that we were leaving our foot in it. We were putting our foot in it and we were going to drive the piss out of that car. Um, I was going to find the limit to what dad's car would do. And last weekend, uh, two weekends ago now, we'd went to Salem and tested and I'd never been to Salem before. Salem's a little rough. It's got some bumps. It's got some character. And I had a really good car. I really liked the way the car was. We'd done some stuff to it. We changed the setup a little bit. Um, for me, I showed you guys the scale numbers, which if you're watching and you think I was bullshitting you guys at Salem, I had 29.8% cross. Um, I'm not bullshitting you guys in any way. That's the car we took to Bristol. We had 30% cross when we went to Bristol. Um, I got accused by more than one person that I somehow was faking that. Um, and I want to let you guys know, I was not. Um, that was the car we took to Bristol with 30% cross. Okay. Um, so I knew the car was going to be really, really good. Uh, we went out for first practice and tried to give ourselves a little bit of a gap. And... I managed to get a decent run in the first practice. Um, but being first practice, being in dad's car, which I'm not entirely comfortable with, he sits in a different position than I do uh, and things like that. We, I, I got a good lap, but it wasn't, as, it wasn't to the extent that the car could do um, because I, I lifted for about five to eight car lengths uh, in one corner and flat footed the other, which is, amazing but we flat footed i can't i couldn't i could never do that in my car dad's car took it and it handled it so well that car handled so good um and we went in 1909 uh we were third quick uh 19 or 1890 a 1905 and 1909 and then i think in 1901 was the top four um and it was tom gosser jake albright me and then i think kyle stark was the top four um and so 
we managed to make it back around a couple times. And the last time um, around, I was, I've never been so excited for four laps in practice in my life. Um, things worked out that I was on Kyle Stark's ass. Um, we take the, we take the green and I actually, um, uh, Devin Dixon, if you're watching this, but I'm sorry, I kind of, I kind of chopped you, I think a little bit, uh, but, uh, which congratulations, Devin Dixon, our, uh, the front wheel discussion B main winner. Um, we will have Devin on at some point, uh, very soon, but I was like, no, I want Stark, man. I know that like, I, I, now mind you, I hadn't seen any of the times yet. So, uh, as I'd come through the one session, dad told me that I was third quick, which I can't tell you how excited I was after that, but, um, is Kyle and mind you, if I'm at Bristol, I assume Kyle Stark's top three in time. Okay. Um, I assume Tom Gossard's top three in time, uh, and the last few years, uh, last couple years, I assume Jake Albright's top five, you know, th these, these guys are all top five, right? Um, so I'm assuming that, J that Stark is one of the guys who's right in front of me. So come to find out he was right behind me. And I mean, literally like Oh nine to a one Oh, right. Um, but we clear and I am on his ass and there's four laps left to practice. And, and he had clear track in front of him and I had him in front of me and buddy, I was about to see how I stacked up to Kyle Stark and it was going to be a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't, if I could, if I could just hang with him, that was cool. I would, I probably would have, if like, if I was catching him, I'd have backed off slightly so I could get a good run on one of those laps. But, um, something happened. Uh, actually, I think it was when, uh, Bill Honius, uh, unfortunately hit the wall, um, he is okay. If you guys happen to see that wreck, he did go to the hospital. He got checked out. Uh, and the last that I knew he was okay. I was talking to him. He came back to the racetrack. He was okay. Um, but we were not going to be able to finish practice. So they just checkered us and we, we went off. So I was ridiculously, um, excited to get those four laps of practice. Uh, we didn't get them. So, but Pull back into the pits, third quick. And again, like I said, Gossert went a 9-0. Um, uh, Jake went a uh, 5 I went a 9 Stark went a 10. So that was your top four. So I'm at this point, I can't tell you guys how excited I was for this race because I didn't get the lap. Like that, there was still more in the car. I knew there was easily one to two to maybe three tenths more um in the car. So this year, they also at Bristol, they we'd been begging for this and begging for this and begging for this. And they finally did it for us. They grouped the cars for qualifying by speed. Um, so they went through and groups were done by color. We were blue group uh, being one of the first few. I was in the blue group. Uh, so we were going to go out first. Uh, There's only 14 cars instead of like 18 for practice. So I won't lie to you guys. I was ridiculously excited for qualifying because let's go right uh third quick i got more in the car i don't know if these other guys do i assume they do but i know that they probably have what i've got maybe a little bit less like for the first time in this is the this was the sixth time i've went to run bristol and this was the first time the first year i legitimately thought i had a chance at fast time uh, but i thought a bunch of us did we none of us knew what we were doing every year since i've had speed but I, I don't, I didn't think I had that shot. And this year I did. Um, I knew, I knew I could go in nine and I felt I could go in eight. Um, and then we had one guy and I already talked to him about this, so I'm not naming names. I'm talking to him about this. One guy left a really, really big gap and stacked up a couple of us. And I caught the guy in front of me like that. And then, um, yeah, I backed off as far as I could. Stark was behind me. I forget who was behind him. I backed off as far as I could with them in my mirror, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to screw Kyle. So as soon as I seen that they were getting close enough and had a little bit of a run, I put my foot back in it, and I literally caught the guy in front of me in one corner. Um, I went into the corner, didn't lift, and caught him, um, and then raced him for two laps. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Hug him for for two laps, um, and I went a nineteen oh five, um, and I could not believe. And I came in, and again, I was told I was third quick. That's awesome. And I, and the cool part about the way they grouped this was is that I knew that there wasn't fifteen guys after me that were likely able to beat me. And I and I don't mean that in a negative way, um, but 
I knew that I was, I knew I was in the A main. I knew there was no way that I could possibly be bounced out of the A main at that point. Um, and I honestly going in Oh five, I, I, first off, I was very surprised that I went in Oh five because I didn't think that I had, um, I didn't, I didn't think I had a, a clean enough lap to do that. Um, I didn't go wide open into either corner at any point. So that's why I didn't think I had a good enough lap. Um, and then sitting there watching and, um, I ended up getting bumped down to fourth quick. Um, Bo Hosher got me. Um, so Jake Albright ended up fast time with, I think a seven, eight, uh, an 18, seven, eight. Um, which by the way, times did slow down a little bit this year, uh, uh compared to the years previous, However, we were on a 795 on the left side, and every year we've ever been before, we had 790s on on the left side and 795s on the right, and it is worth a few tenths. So um, that was hence why times were a little bit slower and there was a little bit bigger gap was that 795 on the left really did slow some people down. Um, so for me to go a O on a 795 left, not getting a clean lap, I was ridiculously excited. Bo ended up getting me... Um, it had uh, um, Jake Albright was quick time. Uh, Tom Gosser was second. Bo was third. All of them went into the 18s. Um, I don't remember exactly the times. I know Jake was 18, high 18, seven. Um, but they all went to seven or 18. Um, and I went to 05, knowing I still had two tenths or more in the car. Um, so Jake pulls an 11 for the invert. Um, I start fourth row outside. I've never started so far forward at Bristol. Uh, previously the best I've started was like 15th. Um, I've started 18th. I've started like 28th. Um, so, and I'm looking at who's in front of me and this might sound a little bad, but, uh, Stark, as I looked ahead of me, I'm like, man, Stark is the only one that I think can carry speed for 50 laps and stay ahead of me. Um, I knew the fast guys were behind me. I knew that, that Tom and Jake and Bo could, could get to me and get around me. If I, if I can only go in, O, I knew that they could get around me, but, um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to take anything away from the guys in front of me. Um, they were really fast, but I didn't think, and, and this is just the racer in me. This is the ego in me. And I will accept that. I will admit that. But I knew if I could get ahead of Stark, if there wasn't anybody else that's going to stop me from taking the lead. Um, and I was right. <laughs> um, we started out. Well, I tell you what I'm going to do, uh, guys and gals, I probably shouldn't do this. Um, ah, I'm fighting because I want to show you guys the first seven laps of the race. It's about a three minute video. Um, the issue is, is that this is a copyrighted stream from racing America. And I don't, I'm not intending to step on their toes at all. Um, I believe that I can do this under the fair use policy. Um, I am not trying to take any credit away. This is racing America's broadcast. Their logo and everything is still on this. Um, uh, I am going to keep my head down here, uh, so that I can comment on this a little bit. So if you're watching this in the future and the next little bit disappear, or if you guys are trying to find this, um, video after a while, uh, I will re-upload it if for whatever reason I get a copyright strike, um, because of this. Um, but I will, I'm going to save this and clip that this next portion out if I have to. So this is a total of five minute video. Um, Corey Velade posted this and I am so thankful that he did. This is the full, um, the full race from Bristol that I was in. So this is the first seven laps and which I do have to give a shout out because he commented in here. So Austin Scott said he got hung up in that first group. Also caused me a few times. Uh, Austin, a brother, um, I have to give you major props on somehow uh, not wadding up the entire field. So Austin was out front and the car got a little loose on him, got a little uh, away from him and he ended up all the way down on the apron. And I'm not kidding you. You guys will see this in the top row racing media video. I start waving my arm because he is 90 degrees sideways at the bottom of the track and he managed to drive out of it and get pointed forward again. 
Um, they don't do a good job showing this in the broadcast a little bit, but it terrified me um, because I was worried that he was going to snap back around and come back up or just back up into the track. Did an amazing job, Austin, for not uh, wadding up the field on this one. Um, so I legitimately lifted a little bit and was waving and then he straightened it out. So I hung my foot back in it and we caught back up. Um, so major props to him in the first few laps of this video, they are going to say that it was Mr. Keaton, uh, but it wasn't, it was awesome. They do correct themselves. So just, just keep that in mind. But, um, but yeah, this is the first, um, seven laps from Bristol. And I do want to reiterate again this is Racing America stream, um, and I'll actually here. I'm gonna. I will turn my brand off uh, for a minute here, uh, just because I do not want to cover their logo. I don't want to. I don't want to take any credit for this. Uh, we are trying to. We're trying to avoid copyright strike. But this is the first seven laps. Uh, plus, um, actually, I need to be down on this corner. Um, but this is the first seven laps of Bristol. And hold on, this is doing something goofy. Here we go. And four. And everybody else that transferred in through the Concy. White we'll flag and one to go that we'll time by Shepard Stanley of Auto Group. Already. It is the red. Hip supply. Chevy Cruz pulls to the bottom side of the racetrack. We're about to go racing here at Bristol. 50 laps presented by the Pest Doctor. Coming to the restart zone. Austin Scott. The 26 car of Bello to the green flag we go. Chief starter Kenny Marcus waves the green flag off into turn number one we go. 50 big rotations on tap for the Boris Compact Touring Series as they rocket down the back straight away. Austin Scott, John Ketron side by side as they work back into turns three and four. Virtually the whole field still knotted up as they come off turn four. Austin Scott, John Ketron still side by side down the front straight away they go. Scott now out to the early lead. Here comes Jake Burkoff into the third position off of turn number two. Three cars under a blanket right there for that third spot momentarily. Thought about three wide down the back straight away. Thought better of it. Well, got one down to the bottom of the racetrack. That's Ketron in 26. He'll try to jump back on down the front stretch. That was Austin Scott getting sideways, all kinds of sideways down into turns number three and four. Now that puts the lead into John, into John Ketron's hands. Burkoff in the, set, in the second position and B.J. One ball in the third. Here comes Kyle Stark to the top side of Jake Burkoff as they work their way off at turn number four. Racing America side by side. We see great battles throughout the field on the right-hand side of the screen, just inside the top ten on the left. Third through about that tenth spot. Racing all over Bristol Motor Speedway right now, and there is Todd Metz Jr. on the inside. Todd Metz Jr. and Josh Richards battling side by side off at of turn number four. Here comes fast qualifier Jake Albright to the high side of Derek Simons. Around the lap car, Phil Isla goes John Ketron. Here comes BJ Wimbaugh to the bottom side of Ketron and coming through turns number three and four. Jake Burkoff tries to follow in suit. Stark and Metz right behind them as well to fill the hole coming into turn one and two. Oh, Three-way battle for the lead off of turns one and two. Sideways is Wimbaugh. Ketron still comes out with the lead coming down the back straightaway. Todd Metz Jr. to the top side now. Everybody's underneath a blanket through first through fifth. Yeah, Wambold was completely sideways off of turn number two that last time by. Got it gathered back up, but now hung out to dry on the bottom of the racetrack, being freight trained right now through the second groove off turn two. Here comes Todd Metz Jr. to the top side of Jake Burkhoff. In it turns number three and four. Kyle Stark tries to fall on his tracks. To the outside of Burkoff goes Stark. Here comes fast qualifier Jake Albright as they make their way into turn one. Whoa, Todd Metz Jr. sideways in the center of the corner, but still trying to run down that leader, John Ketron. He has cast a line and a reel and in. Meanwhile, behind him, they're two by two for third. Here comes Todd Metz Jr. down to the bottom side of John Ketron. Cross the stripe, 42 laps to go. We got a smoker of Jeff Four. He pulls off the racing surface, still clean and green. Todd Metz Jr. to the lead down the back straightaway. Kyle Stark follows suits. Here comes Bass qualifier Jake Albright. Oh, Todd Metz Jr. uses a tire. It turns three and four. Most everybody able to avoid the spinning Todd Metz Jr. There goes the tire rocketing down the front straightaway past the speed cam. 
Still rolling down the apron into turns one and two. Todd Metz Jr. had a rocket of a race car here tonight. But unfortunately, it looks like a rear hub is still connected to the back side of that tire as it rolls through turns one and two. So tough break for the 62 car of Todd Metz Jr. as he climbs out and he's A-OK -okay over in turns number three and four. What a dramatic change for this race. This is almost like the race you don't want to lead. I, I don't know about you, Zach, but I am fired up. Like, this is this is good side-by-side -side racing throughout the whole entire field. Jake Albright all the way up to second from his 11th starting spot. I mean, wow, he is on a rail, and he chose the top side and just let her all hang out. Heartbreak for Todd Metz Jr. in 62, though. The right rear gone, and here's the replay. Leads the pack into turn number three. As they start to go and uh, think about splitting him, there it goes. Just completely it looked like, shears off the car. It looked like John Ketron and Kyle Stark saw something happening to the 62 car as they started their entry into turn number three, and they tried to split him, then they both backed off there a little bit, and then around went Todd Metz Jr., you see Todd walking uh, in the blue fire suit around his race car. Let's take a look at this one more time as they go into turn number three. Watching the 62, leader of the race. Tire leaves and wow. no contact with any other race car. Somehow missing. Oh, my wow. goodness. Somehow missing John Ketron in 26. Inches, inches away from John Ketron's Bristol being just up in smoke and up in sparks. Great job good. by everybody else, too, in the field to I mean, do driving. what they need to do. Yeah. Good driving by this uh, 192. from the start finish line when I knew and I was all the way under Ketron to the entrance of turn three in that time span, I had already <clears throat> my ADHD brain, which operates at a, at a pretty fast level. I had already formulated the plan for the race. I was about to go, we were going to go into turn three. Um, we lifted a little going into turn three to set ourselves up well. And then the next time around, when I went into turn one, we were going to not lift. And then the next time into turn three, we were not going to lift. And I was going to go three or four laps <laughs> wide fucking open with the goal and the intention that the chaos behind me was going to keep Gosser and Albright tied up and that I was going to use my mirror and see how far back everybody was at that point. And then if they were back far enough, we were going to start backing off a little bit going in. We were going to start lifting. Um, so that we weren't abusing the car a hundred percent. We were abusing it, but not, you know, it's a, it's Bristol. We're abusing it, but that way I could save a little bit. Um, in half lap, I had that formulated and then I went into turn three. I want to show you guys some of the most badass pictures I've ever seen. Um, where did they go? Hold on. Oh, I know what's wrong. Um, there we go. So this uh, is a picture from KG Media that I showed you guys. All right. Slide over here. These are by Britt Van Meter. Um, so I shared her post with these images that were watermarked. Um, 
and I messaged her when I seen that and asked to purchase these um, to be able to use them how I see fit. Um, that way I can, you know, use posts with them and stuff like that. And this picture right here is going to be hung back here at some point uh, as soon as I get it printed. Um, <laughs> I'm going to blow this up full screen so hopefully you guys can see a little better. Um, this is me <laughs> with the right rear hub off at Bristol and showering them in sparks. And I want to point out, I'm still leading this race right now. Um, so here and here, I'm leading this race. And you can see Stark's car start to get a little bit uh, out of shape as he gets on the brakes to get out um, of the way. And there I am farther sideways and my tire up against the wall. And again, <laughs> look at the sparks. Actually, I really, really like this photo too. Um, I'm probably going to print off all of these. And this one's pretty badass too. I am still leading at Bristol Motor Speedway in this picture. And that shower sparks. And you can see Stark uh, has it to try to avoid me. And Catron is trying to avoid me. And there's my tire. And if you guys showed me this picture of you at a racetrack and you told me that you were probably still doing 70 to 80 mile an hour in this picture, I would ask you how bad both cars were because I would never, ever believe you that they didn't touch. And I am telling you guys and gals, hand to God, me and Mr. Catron in the 26 never touched. At all. I, if I ever race against uh, John again, I owe him, if he drinks beer, I'll buy him a case of beer. If he drinks pop, I'll buy a pop. Um, <laughs> I owe that man. Because um, he easily could have gotten into me. Um, some phenomenal driving that he didn't. Stark, Albright, some really great driving. And I don't know who it was, but in the video, you can see me almost clip somebody um, as I come back down the track. And I, I had, I was, both feet were on the brakes. Um, wheels were locked. I was sliding at that point. There was nothing I could do. Um, when I tagged the wall, I hadn't quite hit the wall at this point. When I did, it blasted the left front, blasted the camber in, blew that tire. Obviously, I don't have anything on the right rear. Um, or, yeah, on the right rear. So, at that point, I was done. I was just along for the ride. Um, but the fact that the entire field missed me, um, I'm going to pull up and I'll show you guys the top row from inside my car, um, in just a minute. I, <laughs> when the wheel came off, um, I didn't process at the time that the car dropped. Uh, I just processed that it was, it snapped. So you actually watch me lock it out, right? Staying in the gas, trying to save it because I thought somebody tagged me in the left rear. Um, I, I knew I was clear. I was not looking in my mirror at that moment. So, um, I just, I thought somebody had tagged me. Um, and that was what snapped it around. And, um, so I'm trying to save it and I'm, and I'm holding it in, holding it in. And then it just snaps around and up, um, and bounces off the wall. My arm comes off and I kind of, I'm holding the wheel to try to point it in the proper direction again. And when I get to the bottom, I literally just do this. As I spun around and was facing backwards, I was staring at the front of that 26 through a shower of sparks, and I knew that he was going to get me, and somehow he didn't. And then I'm staring at the entire field coming at me. And as I started to go down the track, I made a very conscious choice to not move my head. Um, I kept looking forward and when I stopped, the reason I put my hands in front of my face and my hands up was because I knew that somebody was going to drive full throttle into my door. And it's honestly about one of the most, that was the scariest part for me was the five seconds or so as cars were still passing me 
um, sitting there waiting to get hit in the door. And nobody touched me. Nobody. So I owe the entire field a uh, debt of gratitude that everyone missed me. Um, this photo here is probably my favorite. Um, when Britt emailed me these photos, this one was not put on Facebook. I didn't know this one was coming. This was the first one that I opened. Um, and when I did, I was laying in bed with my wife and this hit me like a ton of bricks because not one minute before this photo was taken was probably the highlight of my 15 year career. To be out front at Bristol. And less than a minute later, was this picture. And on my cell phone, <laughs> without zooming in, my wife said, God. I can just see the defeat in your face. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, the entire time I was showing you guys those pictures, it was not looking at the uh, um, comments. Brit is a guy. I am. I am so sorry, Brit. I am so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. That's what you get for not having any pictures on your Facebook page of you. I apologize profusely. Um, these pictures are amazing. Um, I absolutely love. Um, these pictures and even this picture here. Um, like I said, I think this is my favorite picture. I truly do. I think this is my favorite picture from Bristol. Um, so now that's probably as emotional as these guys will see me get. Um, but It could have been so much worse. And I have to remind myself that um, this entire time, okay? I truly do. It could have been so much worse. Um, I easily could have been hit by the 26, spun down, got hit in the door by any of the other 35 people out there. Um Start could have got me. Jake could have got me. Everybody could have hit me. Um, I easily could have snapped that around immediately, nosed it in the wall. I could have gotten hurt. I had a little bit of a Charlie horse in the muscle um, uh, in my leg just because I hit dad's seat. Um, dad doesn't have the leg rest on a seat. He's going to, whether he knows it or not. Um so I did just have a line and it was just muscle soreness. It wasn't anything bad. Um, I did not get my bell rung. I had no... I had no pain other than that. And honestly, it probably wouldn't have been that bad, but I was running through the pits afterwards trying to find our impact and the jack and stuff to try to swap hubs. Dad went out and got a new hub so that we could swap it and try to get towed out um, so we didn't get caught for the modified race. Uh, it didn't work, but um, but yeah, the hub broke. Um, I forgot to grab it and bring it in here with me. The flange broke off the hub. And it is not the first time that it's happened. It will be the last. Um, I don't know what the answer is because th here's the fun part. Here's the fun part. If you have a Cavalier, you know you need a safety hub. Campbell, D&D, &D, um, Brad Chandler. Um, I mean, there's like three, four, five versions of them, right? Everybody knows that you need one. Okay. Um, but neons, you'll exceed them or you won't. 
there are guys who ask about them. I break them. And you'll see in, you know, the, the neon pages and the forums and the front drive stuff, you'll see a bunch of guys that are like, Hi, what are you doing? Are you, what are you doing wrong? I ran one for 17 years. The same one on. It's got 750,000 miles on it. I ain't never had no problems. I ain't never broke a single one. What are you doing wrong? What's your problem? And then you'll get guys like me. It's like, yeah, I broke a few of them. But the first one I ever broke, I'd hit the wall. So I chalked it up to that. The second one I broke um, had a lot of laps on it. Um, so I chalked it up to that. This one had Salem and Bristol. It did not have a total of 75 laps on it. Um, I talked to a buddy of mine who, uh, who autocrosses Dodge Neons, and he is a bad son of a bitch doing it. Um, super wicked fast car. I mean, he runs a 275 Hoosier um, R6 on the front and a 255 on the back. So, uh, or 295 on the front even. Like, he runs some 8, 10-inch slicks, right? So, he knows the limits of these things. And he brought up something that he wonders if maybe the, uh, brake uh, drum and the, um, hub didn't quite line up like they should have. And we just were loading it in a weird way. Um, so I'm going to investigate that, but I can tell you guys and gals that whether anybody else is going to do this or whether I'm doing it on my own, um, I am going to figure out a safety hub solution for the neons. Um, I don't know what it'll be because the, the cabbies, the beauty that they have is that they can bolt on a stub. Um, we have a, a stub. And so the nice part is, is that the stub usually doesn't break. That's a strong part. So there is somebody I'm going to reach out to who uh, races a neon at a level that is insane. Uh, his name's Doug Wind. Um, he's a super nice guy. If you guys have ever watched the Optima Streetcar Challenge, you'll know the Alpha Skittle. Um, he runs some custom stuff, so I'm going to reach out to him and see if he can help me out a little bit. Um, but I'm going to design a, a better hub. Uh, whether I do it, whether somebody else does, we'll find out, right? Um, but it will be the last one I break. So... And if I figured out and I get some made, they'll be up for sale. So, because if you guys are worried about it, you're going to break them too, I got you, right? Um, now, having said that, I went a 1909 in the feature. <laughs> I went a 1909 in practice. I went a 1905 in qualifying. I went a 1909 in the feature. Your boy is consistent, okay? Um... So the worst part for me out of this whole weekend, besides the whole highest I've ever, you know, highest of highs I've ever had racing to one of the lowest feelings I've ever had in a race car. Um, despite that, I will never know how fast we could have went. I fully, truly believe that we could have went an 18, seven something, maybe even faster. Um, that car was a fucking rocket. It is the best car I've ever had um, by far. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> by far. So, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I would have done. I wish I would have. That's the regret that I have is that I don't know um, exactly what's going to happen. So, yeah. I do have to say, Mr. Bo Hosher is in the house. Uh, Bo had himself a really good run after having a lot of bad luck. Uh, had an axle come apart on him, um, but was up front. And Bo ended up with the fastest lap of the feature down to an 18, I think, 7-2. So there was a few guys that went 18-7s. Um, and I'm gonna call this right now. Hey, okay, this is unofficial. I have not heard word from anybody else. My understanding is, is that he denies this, but, um, I do have to give, <laughs> I have to say this. If you guys are watching the broadcast, you heard them talking about how they found an intake on the track and the restrictor was still in it. And they were talking about it over the receiver. And I have not talked to the gentleman. I don't think I've ever talked to him in person. Uh, but I believe that belonged to the 42 of Danny Caschioli because Danny went from somewhere around 10th to 15th in that region to the lead after the caution when they found that air intake and he was dragging the shit out of Bo down the straightaway. Uh, and Bo would suck right back up to his bumper in the corner and then he'd get drugged down the straightaway again. 
And nobody drags anybody at Bristol that way without corner speed. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is this is my opinion. I think that Danny did not have the restrictor in for that portion. Uh, he didn't end up finishing uh, for some reason. I don't actually know why. Um, but I think there was a portion of time where you guys got to see what would happen if uh, one car had no restrictor because uh, he was going down uh, the straightaway. Uh, really, really good. So, um, but yeah, Bo had an opportunity to win. Um, Jake had an opportunity to win. I had an opportunity to win. Danny had an opportunity to win, uh, whether he could have kept it or not. <laughs> um, but I do not want to detract from back to back to back champ, um, Tom Gosser, three time Bristol national winner. Tom Gosser. So I am going to have Tom on the show. He knows that I'm going to have to talk to him. Um, but he did exactly what he needed to do. He was fast, uh, led practice, second fast qualifier, ended up with a top five lap time. Uh, I think he got down to a seven. Some, there was like three or four guys that went at 18-7. Um, so he was right there, top two, three, four, five time. Um, and did what he had to do. He was there at the end of 50 laps and he won the Bristol Nationals. So props to Tom Gosser. I want to take nothing away from him. I will say that if that right rear stayed on, he probably would have had to put me in the wall to keep it though. Because unless I got drug on a start or restart, I was going to be really, really, really hard to pass. So... I don't know if we could have got to a seven. I don't know if we could have held off everybody else, but we had the lead. And I can count on one and a half hands or less the amount of times that I have been passed while leading. Um, I have lost a lot of races. I've never got to the lead, but if I've gotten to the lead, it's kind of a cold day in hell when I relinquish it. And if you think that I wouldn't have done everything I'd have had to do at Bristol Motor Speedway, <laughs> we would have. I wouldn't have wrecked him. I wouldn't have wrecked him. But we'd have made him consider that I might for it. So <laughs> now that was my Bristol um, in a nutshell. I. I am so torn whether to be happy for the weekend, upset for the weekend, everything. I, 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 everything. I felt every emotion that you could feel about a race car in the last however many days. Um, but at the end of the day, I still, um, I'm still so happy I went. I'm so proud of those seven laps that I got to run. I am so proud to be able to say that I led at Bristol Motor Speedway. Um, I, I hate the phrase. They knew we were there. Um, but I think a lot of people knew we were a contender. Um, I can't say that we had it on lock. I mean, I was like ninth quick in lap times. You know, I didn't get a good lap, but I was only like ninth quick on lap times. So, but I definitely think if had we been there at the end, I think we could have beat Tom or could have finished second to Tom. Um, especially knowing who else dropped out with Bo dropping out and Jake dropping out and stuff like that. So if it had been down to me and Tom, I think it could have been a hell of a race. So um, having said that, I also want to give some shout outs uh, for some people. Um, first off, we got to talk about Don Rufner. Um, I am going to... Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you guys and gals. He was on here a minute ago. I don't know if he's still here. I'm going to have try to have Don as my guest on Thursday. Um, I know Tom won, Don won the C main. Okay. Don won the C main, right? However, Don Rufner went in 18, like seven, nine or eight, 18, eight, 18, nine. he went eighteens. Okay. And he went from the C main to like fifth or sixth in the A until something happened and he dropped out with like 10 to go, I think. Okay. That man 
and he did it with no clutch. They had to push start him and all of that every time. Uh, his crew pushed him up into victory lane. Um, he was rolling. He started at the tail of the B, rolled all the way up to a transfer spot. I think he finished third behind Devin Dixon and Pete Doxey. Okay. Transferred up through. Huge shout out to Don Rufner. Okay. Um, huge shout out to Don Rufner, right? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to, uh, he was pitted next to us with Mr. Doug Peters. Doug's local guy up here. Usually back of the A, B main kind of guy up here. Wanted to live his dream of going down and running um, uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. And he did. And he was doing excellent. Uh, he made it, somebody kind of woke up, got a little squirrely and popped him and, and broke and ended his run, but he was running a great race. So yeah, Doug, proud of you, buddy. Um, Don, what are you doing Thursday? <laughs> right. Um, uh, Corey says, oh, Don, Don, uh, was rolling broken. Did you break a uh, control arm ankle, uh, control arm, uh, or blah, 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 blah. axle Don was that what, what you broke? I thought, I thought it was something like that. Um, but the, he bought, he fought adversity like crazy. Um, they, they were working on a motor, had like a lifter go back. Like there was a lot of stuff like Don, Don probably should not have been in that C main, but he was, um, and, and listen guys, gals, the other thing I want to say, there's no sandbagging, uh, VCTS starts the, the B main and the C main straight up. Uh, they don't really have a breakout rule. Um, once you get past that, the idea is they don't want you to sandbag to try to start like at the front of the A. Um, but if you have a bad qualifying run and you have to start in the C, you're going to be able to go forward. So that's what happened, uh, in this case, just so nobody cues it down and nothing. Okay. Um, and then the B main, Mr. Pete Doxy, I thought he had her on lock, but he didn't put the power steering in, which the power steering in his other car came out of my race car. So I figured he'd put it in there, but uh, after, after Pete got done with the B main finishing second, um, he, uh, how, how many laps did you get in, in the A main, uh, Pete? Uh, but Pete was rolling in the A main as well. Uh, and shout out to Devin Dixon for winning the uh, front wheel discussion B main. So, uh, I don't know if he is going to, uh, we gave him a flag. We got a, we got a picture taken up in victory lane with him. Uh, don't know if he is going to, we gave him the flag that we use. Don't know if he's going to fly it. Don't know if he, what he's going to do with it, but Hey, you know, we gave it to him. So, uh, it was just a dream of mine. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys and gals. It was supposed to be, um, uh, this brand that just popped up, the old front wheel drive shop. It's supposed to be that one, but uh, it was just a miscommunication with me and uh, Mr. Redmond. And so, uh, yeah, so it was the front wheel discussion, uh, B main. But I'm just, I'm really happy. And that did cost me. Um, I I gave Dan Redmond cash money for that sponsorship. Don't think that was handed to me or anything like that. So we did pay for that sponsorship. Um, but I was really, really happy uh, to do that. So shout out to Devin Dixon for winning that. Um, my goal is in the next few weeks, um, to try to get, um, Tom on to try to get Don on and to try to get, uh, Devin on for sure. Uh, just to be able to talk to all the winners. Um, yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, and I'm going to message all of them probably tonight or tomorrow. So yeah. Um, I'm going to interrupt this to do something that I have not done in a while. There's a bunch of you watching stick around. It's just a minute or two. This is try to help to pay the bills. Okay. This right up here, the front wheel drive at Dodge shop. That's me. Okay. As a bunch of, you know, right. We've got some stuff for the season coming up that you guys are going to need or want. Uh, we do have the power steering controllers in stock and, uh, yeah, I'm not going to BS you guys. They're pretty much the same exact thing that most everybody else sells. We sell them cheaper. Okay, we do have them in stock. The wife's handling shipping. Things go out the door. We've got our staples. We do have our helmet hooks for sale. Okay, we do still have our basic bundle going on. You get a helmet hook, a receiver mount, and some hood pin plates. These mount um, with a hose clamp, which I send you. It's a thin, lightweight, all stainless steel hose clamp. Okay, um, there's like 29 colors, 28 colors. We're going to have another couple added up. Okay, helmet hooks. Um, and then we have radio mounts and listen guys and gals if you, you pick your radio i got you covered okay um i am serious which if you need radio we sell those too right do you have the regular receiver do you have the nitro beat hey i got you covered okay 
Do you have the new rechargeable element? I got you covered, okay? Do you have the old RE switch? I got you covered, okay? Do you have the RE Pro? I got you covered. Also, uh, we have two versions of this. It is, we have a tall one and a short one. Um, then the other thing we got, and we are selling these like uh, crazy. People are really liking these. We have the new Nitro B. We have the mounts for that too, okay? And I have two versions. We have the roll bar mounted version, um, which we are going to have the new updated design on the race on the on the uh, website really really soon. Uh, but it's roll bar one, so it uses some zip ties, hooks onto the uh, roll bar. The other style is like this one. It is a flat back. You notice there's three holes. Uh, if we pop this out, you'll see a little indention in there. The middle hole is so you can use a quarter inch bolt and washer or the outside to fit a large head rivet uh, with a flat back. These also can take uh, like tape and stuff. Now, one neat thing, guys and gals, just so you know, old style, new style, these mounts are interchangeable, okay? So if you happen to buy one of the new Element receivers, now, if you bought one of these a while ago, this is the new design, okay? So get with me, I can let you know if yours is that, but you can interchange them, okay? So if you buy a new receiver, you don't have to. We do also have the receivers on the website as well, okay? But the new Nitro Bs, right? These bad boys are like, I'm selling them like crazy. Now, one other thing, you notice I have a new Nitro B. You notice I have an RE switch. You notice I have an RE Pro. You notice I have an element. You notice that, right? So we are going to do some testing on these, by the way, too. At one point here soon, that is the idea. I'm going to make a video with all of these, okay? I also have what they call the Simple Seaver, which is just a Balfang radio. Um, I do have one of those. We're going to make them out for one of those too as well, right? Now, uh, what else we got down here? Oh, these are still on the website. We have our bump stops, okay? Soft, medium, hard, two inch, inch and a half, one inch, right? Three sizes available. I'm um, working on, I've got guys asking me for even different sizes, so we might have some different ones up. These are the larger diameter. These are 22 millimeter shaft to fit your neon, your Cavalier, your McPherson strut style. We also do have, they will be up on the website tonight or tomorrow at the latest. So on the show Thursday, I can tell you guys all about them. Uh, we will have the Honda size, so 14 millimeter centers, okay? The next thing that will be up on the website, we've got a couple of these out being tested and they're working really well lap sievers if you guys have one of the race siever lap sievers we have mounts for those as well these are designed um with a bigger slots these are going to come they're going to be a little bit more money these are going to come with because these are a lot heavier uh they're going to come with the uh, hose clamp mounts okay uh i got just one or two more things here just bear with me i promise you bear with me okay Light sievers. If your track is doing light sievers, um, these will be up on the website. We've had some. Um, these are going to be up on the website as well. We have some in stock. We can ship out to you. The other cool thing, though, is we have the mounts for them. Okay. Uh, fun fact if you order a mount from light siever or from ray siever, your boy makes it. These mounts are sold by ray siever. My design, my manufacturing, we sell them to them. Um, this is the new style. This is, you're going to be able to get the rivet style, which is that flat back or these, um, these are designed to use the hose clamps because light siever has their new and out, which detects the G meter. These also, we redesigned them. So they look a little bit more like the actual light siever. They just snap in. You're good to go. Okay. Uh, if you order a light siever for me, you get them out for free. If you order a ray siever for me, you get them out for free. Okay. Keep that in mind. Right. These will be available in like all 29 colors that we have. The last thing that we have that is already existing on the website, uh, we do have a coilover adapter. So if you guys want to run a two and a half inch spring, but you need that McPherson top uh, for the uh, bearing, bam, there you go. We got those up on the website. Anodized aluminum, super nice, super trick. Um, yeah, I won't lie to you. I'm not using them in my car, but it's because we're using some ground control um, camber caster plate deals uh, and you kind of need their plate to go with it. But these work exceedingly well. Doc, the car I had, had these in. These are so you can use a stock spring uh, bearing and stock top with a two and a half inch coilover spring. All right. Now the other thing that's new, that's going to be up on the website tonight or tomorrow. I've got two separate things here. Okay. The first one we're going to talk about is this baggie of stuff right here. And you're going to look at me and you're going to go, Todd, you already have this on the website. What the hell are you talking about? I do, but I don't. Okay. I do, but I don't. So these are some new colors. All right. 
And you're going to be like, well, Todd, you kind of already have those colors. We got a see-through blue. We've got a magenta. We've got purple. We've got pink. We got, they call it space gray. We've got orange, which I know you're like, Todd, that doesn't look as bright as your normal orange. I know there's a reason for it. We've got blue. And we've got red. And we have see-through green. We have white. We got two different yellows. We've got another color or two coming. Here's a really cool thing about these guys and gals. Here's why they are new. I was told by some of you dirt guys that the plastic ones just weren't holding up. They'd get hit by a rock and pow, they'd break. These are what I am going to be calling my indestructible hood pin plates. And why can I say that? Because these bad boys are made out of a rubber type material. So they do have a little bit of uh, the center is a little raised, as you can see there. Okay. But the cool part about these is if your hood is curved, guess what? This thing will curve with it. Okay. If, you, if it gets hit by a rock, it's going to live. It doesn't care. It doesn't care at all, okay? They are made out of rubber. If you order these for me, you're going to get a pack of five, and you are going to get all the rivets you need to put these on, okay? So all of those fancy colors, and we are going to continue to find more. As we find more in this material, we will have that color for you. Um, but yeah, all of these, all of these colors are this flexible material. So you want some pink ones? That's cool. Hit them with rocks. It doesn't matter. Put them on a hood that's bent. doesn't matter. You can 90 degree them, sons of bitches. They don't care. Okay, tackle them right up. These are the new indestructible hood pin plates. They will be available. We are only going to do this large size. The smaller size doesn't work quite so well uh, in this material. So we're only going to offer the larger size, but we will have three eighths and half inch hole. So if you want some indestructible hood pin plates, let me know. Last thing, okay, it's a two-parter. You guys all know what that is. You should know. That is the power steering controller. Okay, that's the one we sell. The cool part is the thing dangling around on the back, though. Some of you guys are having issues with these. The thing that I have found out, and the thing I've talked to my guy about, is that it's a lot of you dirt guys, and it's because you're beating the shit out of them. Okay, it's the vibrations, it's the harshness, right? So what we've done is this is the prototype version. So the colors aren't quite what you're going to get. We're probably just going to send you black because it's going to make it easier. But it's a two-piece design. The part here bolts onto the back of that. It's solid. That orange part, though, boo 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 boo. It's rubber. This is meant to absorb the vibrations and absorb the impacts to keep that bad boy alive, okay? The other cool thing is we're going to sell these in the two-pack. What's the other part? We're going to sell you the piece here to mount your control knob, okay? You can see on the control knob there. It's going to be hard to show up on camera, but there is a little nubby-dub sitting right there. And the idea is, is you can put some heat shrink over that to protect your wires, to hold them so that they are not going to get bent around in that. It is going to come with a hose clamp because that way it can mount to your roll cage or nice and tight, inch and a half, inch and three quarter. It doesn't care. But that way you can mount your control knob up out of the way and be able to adjust it. The other need is we do have one of these. I don't know where it went, so I can't show you. But it is going to have two small eighth inch rivets to be able to rivet it on if you don't want to do the hose clamps. Okay, here's the deal. Right now, if you go to the website, we do have the cheapest power steering controllers. They're 50 bucks and I send it to you. I'm going to raise the price about five, maybe $7. Okay. Reason being, you are going to pick your colors and I'm going to send you these with it. So moving forward, you order power steering controller for me. It's going to come with these pieces. It's going to have that vibration mount. You can use it if you want to. And it is, you are going to be able to pick, uh, these are probably just going to come in black to be honest with you guys and gals. They're just going to be black. Uh, the color option is going to be whether you want a bolt to rivet one of these and whether or not you want uh, what color 29 colors available. So those are going to be up on the website tomorrow as well. And you're like, Todd, that was a lot of bullshit. Why do we care? Why should you do that? Well, listen, this is how we pay the bills is I make stuff for you guys. I sell it to you. I ship it to you. Okay. And we have a couple other neat neon products, but that's the big one. I thank you so much for your spiel. If you head over to the front drive shop, grab them up. We will be having stickers thrown in, in the orders. We try to do that. The wife's printing some off. I've got more coming. Mr. Scott Mater over at race cows is going to be hooking them up. It's my fault. I don't have them yet. So we will be throwing stickers in. Um, we're going to be doing up, updating, excuse me, some new swag for the front wheel, or front wheel discussion and all that. But you guys have been ordering stuff from me and I appreciate it. Like you cannot believe you ordering that, um, the products, you guys buying receivers from me down at Bristol. Um, the support that you guys get is the reason I can go to Bristol. It's the reason I can sit here in this new studio. The reason I can do the show, the reason I can bring you guys tech. It's the reason why I can do all of this. So 
every now and then I'm going to have to do that. We're going to have to do a little advertisement. I promise it won't be often, but head over to the front wheel drive dot shop. Look it up. Everything free shipping. Uh, if you order merch, so if you order shirts and that, I do have a print on demand company, they ship it. Um, so you do have to pay for shipping with that. That's out of my control. Uh, I could, I could do free shipping, but I'd have to raise the price on a t-shirt, like, $15 just to assure. Uh, I don't make but a couple dollars on all my shirts and stuff because I I refuse to buy a $30, $35 t-shirt. I won't do it. I don't give a shit whose face is on it. So I'm not going to ask you guys to do the same. So you can head over there, pick those out. Uh, Flex fit hats. So we are working on, we are going to get some hats. I do have a few hats um, I need to get put up. We are going to get some hats. We are working. The wife's making some new stickers, some new merch. We're going to get some new stuff up. I'm really excited to do it. So yeah. Uh, hey, Todd, I heard your wheel was leading at the race at one point. All jokes aside, you did awesome, Bristol. Keep the off the awesome work. I appreciate it, man. Um, I really do. I really do. Um, there was some really neat stories that came out. Uh, yeah, Sean Bowers says, uh, my arms were so tired at the end with the power steering. Thank God for cautions. Dude, the reason I have power steering in my race car, the reason I have, the reason I sell these, the reason that I use these is because Bristol, when I finished third, I could barely move my arms at the end of that um race uh barely it killed me i probably honestly could have made a better run at um uh justin brown had i uh not been so damn tired so that race is the reason that i put power steering in my car and if anybody wants to be like well, i don't use power steering that's cool my mom didn't when she raced either but guess what i'm going faster than she used to and when you got the camera caster settings we do, whoo, buddy. Also, you go run 50 laps at Bristol with no power steering, uh, running like a 19.0, 19.1, and you tell me how you do at the end of it, okay? I'm just saying. So, yeah. Um, those of you who went to Bristol, I got to ask you something. If you had a bad race, if you had a good race, okay, um, somebody commented on the pictures that I shared. Um, they sent us the lead in their comment because, well, it didn't go how they thought that it would. And their comment was... Well, that's why those cars never should have been there, right? And it evolved into, it's just not worth it. The risk, the the bad things that could happen, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for anybody to go, right? And I commented, and I'm, I'm, I'm being nice, and I comment that, look, for me, this is my sixth time, five pavement, one dirt. I have weighed the risk versus rewards, and it's been worth the risk every time. And this year was no different. This year was no different. Okay. Um, this comment back was, well, what about the guys that got totaled out? Good for you, but what about them? And I, well, I'll be honest with you guys and gals. I haven't talked to anybody at Bristol who regretted going even after a bad incident. Um, I talked to Mr. Honius after a bad wreck. Um, he he got himself really, really good, okay? Um, and the conversation that I had with him, he did not regret coming to Bristol. After wrecking and going to the hospital, he still didn't regret going. So I am curious, those of you who went, um, especially those of you who um, had a bad time. Okay. Because if you go and you don't hit anybody and you finish well and you know, you win and stuff like that, obviously it's a good time. But if you blow the right rear off while leading and you drive it into the wall, you know, was it worth it? So I'm, I'm asking you guys, I want that conversation going. Um, because I, I, I want to be able to tell people that, that like, you can have your, you know, and, and the thing was, it was on the comment, I was on the post of me blowing the right rear off, right? And you can have that opinion that we don't belong there and we shouldn't be there and it's too fast and blah, blah, blah. You can have that opinion. Well, that's fine, right? And I respect that. If you don't want to go because it's not worth the risk to you, that's cool. I get to say, for the rest of my life, I get to say that I took a Dodge Neon and I led a race at Bristol Motor Speedway. You'll never find it on the books because it wasn't official. I get to say that for the rest of my life. There's nobody else in the world who can say that. 
A Dodge Neon has never led the A-Main at Bristol Motor Speedway. I get to say that. Bo Hosher gets to say he has won a race and driven up to victory lane. You know, Don Rufner gets to say he, well, he got pushed to victory lane, but he went to victory lane at Bristol Motor Speedway. He doesn't have to quantify that it was a C-Main. He gets to say he won a race at Bristol Motor Speedway. When I started racing, in 2007, um, <laughs> if you'd have told me, I was racing a Dodge Daytona, right? And I told a guy, man, if you give me a neon, it'll be fast. I can make a neon fast. And he laughed at me. Part of me wishes I still talked to that jackass. Just so I could ask him what he thought of me leading the A-Main at Bristol in a Dodge Neon. Against arguably some of the best talent and fastest cars in the country. Like, you know, Don says he's ready for the next one. And yeah, Bo posted, uh, so Bristol put out the average, a 19 is basically a hundred mile an hour average. Um, based on the RPMs that we were running, um, a few years ago, the data log that I had in my car with the tire speed and gear and everything like that, I was doing between 112 and 117 going into the corner. It depends on, cause I had a little bit of tire size and stagger. So about 115 mile an hour at the end of the straightaways, um, on pavement. And I want to remind everybody watching that is through a one inch intake restrictor. That is through a 24 millimeter opening. Okay. That's why, like, I love my dirt guys. And they were bad, fast, put on an amazing show at Bristol. They went 20.3, 20.4 is the fastest, okay? I want a 19.0, right? John Wyndham had a posted dyno with 320 wheel horsepower, okay? Corey Edelman just took his Dodge Neon, qualified, what, 15th? Corey, 15th? Uh, and put that some bitch 15th in the A main at 101 wheel horsepower. Okay. So I don't know how fast we could, I think we could go 18. Oh, nah, man, maybe once, right. It probably wouldn't. I mean, I went up, I broke the right rear off going at 19. Oh, but Mark Mason still to this day is the fastest man in a compact around Bristol at 18, three. And that was with an inch and a quarter restrictor. Okay. So we were still restricted like hell, just a quarter inch bigger, which, you know, in the diameter of a circle is a lot. But, you know, yeah, we're we're going, I want a 19 on double um, 795s on both sides, right? Um, John is 298. I thought he had a 320 um, posted. I, listen, 320, 298 to 320 is still, you know, yeah. If you had a bigger motor, I think you would have been hard to beat. So the thing is, is that... Um, I don't know how well Corey would have done with more motor. I would have liked to have seen just so he doesn't have an excuse as to why I drove around him. <laughs> right. Um, but the thing is, um, and now I'm, I'm, I will tell you, I had a few top guys. Okay. Tell me they were in the 160 to 170 horsepower range on the restrictor. Dad's car. We got none to hide. Dad's car made 167 on the restrictor. Uh, his, his made 167 or 162. Mine made 162 or 167. I do get them confused. I think dad made more on the restrictor. That's why I want to say he had 167. We did not make 170 wheel horsepower to go eight or to go 19. Okay. Um, at force engineering up in plain well. Okay. Um, it's, we're going literally a hundred mile an hour average with a hundred to 160 horsepower. Okay. So, yeah, as as Pete says, the G's on asphalt versus dirt, they are not even comparable. Yeah, yeah, I, and 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 I loved racing dirt at pay, uh, at Bristol. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I would go do it again if I had a car and they put dirt down again. I'd go do it again. It was a ton of fun. And the sh and, and listen, the show they put on all week when they did it, the compacts stole the show, stole the show. Dirt compacts great, but it ain't it ain't nothing compared to the pavement side of stuff. It ain't nothing. So, uh, so I do want to read a few of these, um, to answer the question for those of you that are just listening. Right. Um, and, and yes, Jason says you can have just about a wreck at your local quarter mile dirt pavement track. Listen, I totaled out two cars, uh, both times were at a quarter mile track. They were at the two slowest tracks, arguably that I race 
um, that's, that's the times I've totaled cards out. So yeah. Um, and Bo says he will go anytime it is available. Alex, uh, which, Hey, Alex, congratulations on the run you had, man. Uh, it was a lot of fun talking to you in Salem and, uh, congratulations on the run you had too. But he says the risk was 100% the reward. It was the most fun driving a race car he has ever had. Uh, Doug said he would go back in heartbeat. It was a dream for him. Um, and then, uh, Don says he's ready for the next one. So am I brother. Listen, we got to start crowdfunding this thing right now. We only need about $300,000, baby. That's it. I think it's like two fifty to rent the facility, and then our purse. You know, uh, listen. I wonder. I wonder how many front wheel drives it would take to pay. Like, I got to figure some shit out. Like, what would the entry fees have to be? Like, listen, guys and gals, you're gonna get to race Bristol. Uh, it's five hundred to win. Uh, and everybody else gets a hundred bucks and it's going to cost you three fifty to enter. And we need 250 cars. And we are the only ones there. Could you imagine that? <laughs> we were like an F main. We're the only ones there. It'd be a hell of a show. Um, I bet we'd still stream the hell out of it. I don't know if we get a lot of people show up in person, but a lot of people join in to watch us try to tear shit up or go fast. Um, yeah. Dylan Napier says Bristol was a blast. Wish I could have ran the a main. We had a horrible exhaust leak, made it down to one 19 one definitely had more. Yeah. I thought you had it. I thought you had, I, I thought something had to have gone wrong in the B main. Cause you had a really good run going, uh, there for a minute. So, and that's his, my hot rod came back hurting, but I'm ready to have it back there again. Hey, next time. Now, you know what it can do, right? <laughs> so I will, I will come to dad's defense. Cause I had a few people like, Oh God, dad, listen, we put some shit in the front of that car. We put some shit in the rear of that car. We did some setup work on that car. And the car that I took down there, dad wouldn't drive. He'd hate that thing. But that the car is faster since dad drove it. So I'm excited to see what he does with it the next time he gets in it. So Alex says, I was in about eighth place with six laps to go and broken axle and still got out of the car with a smile on my face. There you go. And Jared, this is the comment. Dude, I'm going to put this one right up here and show it. I'd give the whole rest of my season, season just to run practice and my B main again. Scott Gates says, I raced a, uh, started Polar in a Ford Ranger on dirt. It was awesome just being there and experiencing it. Yeah, you almost died. <laughs> uh, Scott was one of them that ran the Danger Ranger uh, on dirt with the Cletus event there uh, last year. So, yeah. Uh, since I had the same th type of thing. People tell me in 03 can make a Dodge Man fat. Yeah, dude, it was, they were, they were, uh, they were doubting me more than the Neon, but yeah, we showed them. So, pieces now that I got a little experience, I'd love to go back. Um, there any chance a series get you guys there again? We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, Doug says, started sixth in the C, he finished 13th, and he was faster than 30 other cars. Dude, Doug, you did a great job. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And Edelman was 13th of practice, 21st in the feature, he finished 11th. So, yeah. Uh, Travis says, as long as the car's safe for a driver to stay safe, et cetera, why the hell not? After watching this since it started, I have improved my car and safety ever since. So, thank you, Todd. Appreciate all you've done for all of us, guys. Listen, safety is everything I'm all about, man. For sure. So... Uh, how much horsepower can any on engine make? It all depends on, uh, so my, my old motor unrestricted made 238, uh, uh, uncorrected 228 corrected at the wheels. The motor that's in dad's car right now made 162. He posted on the restrictor it made 207 off the restrictor. So the highest horsepower, uh, I've ever seen, uh, posted out of a two liter was 298. It was a drag car. I don't believe those numbers fully. Um, I will tell you guys and gals that the new one that I'm putting together for the new car, uh, the things I'm doing, hoping to do some record numbers. Is it going to be K-Series power? Nope. But it'll be a neon. <laughs> so uh, how many RPMs? So uh, I was turning, uh, honestly, with dad's car, I have no idea the tack was broke. Uh, back in the day when I was going seven, uh, 18 eights uh, in my car, uh, when I finished third, uh, high 18 eights, we were running about 77, 7,800 uh, RPM. Dylan says they made 153 wheel horsepower. Don says his was 155 with a restrictor, and the second motor he put in was smaller. Uh, I need to get the dirt car done. Dude, I got to get, I've got four race cars. I got to get done. Uh, I race dirt front wheel drive, and I enjoyed the pavement race more. Dude, pavement's so much fun. Um, Alex says, I don't think anyone makes over 200 wheel horsepower on the restrictor. I, I've seen people post 180, 190, 200, 200 plus. Um, and I believe you can make close to that, but I believe you really got to build some vacuum and you really got to get some airspeed through that restrictor. But I will tell you that if you're making 200, I truly don't believe that it is, but, uh, just, I, I think it's okay. Um, now here's the thing though. Dino numbers don't mean shit. Okay. Cause I have taken 198 wheel horsepower and I have drug guys who said they're making 260. 
I have had 228 and I have had guys supposedly make it 243 make me look stupid. Okay. Numbers don't matter. Um, because this brand of dino versus that brand of dino, um, don't matter. Okay. So yeah. Um, Justin. All right. This is a long one. This one's from YouTube, which thank you guys for watching YouTube. MMB, Justin Bradley on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. I really do. We're trying to build our YouTube up. Uh, but Justin says, love this channel. Learning some stuff about compact racing. I had a 97 Nissan Altima GXC almost fully built at everything except the roll cage was building it for asphalt. That's awesome, man. Uh, I have no idea how a Nissan Altima, Altima would be. I think it'd be kind of heavy, but I don't know. Let me question. So, uh, Nissan Sentra's do pretty good. <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. is dad's car fixable or is it pretty beat up? Um, dude, Pete, you definitely, I can't wait, dude. I will try to tune in, uh, for your live tomorrow with the racing page. Uh, I'm curious how bad your car is. So, uh, now how bad is dad's car? I don't know. Um, so we got it towed up. Uh, it was midnight or so 1230. Uh, and we were trying to load it in the car. It had a, um, a bad, uh, the left front wheel was bent all the shit and the tire was popped when it hit the wall. I went from about eight degrees leaned out to about three or four or five degrees leaned in. It touched the axle, um, against the transmission. We had just replaced the motor mounts. I put my motor mounts in it actually, um, because we had to shift it a little bit for the axles. Um, both motor mounts are bent, uh, which was the entire point of those motor mounts because they are designed to give in the side to side direction, but not forward back direction. Okay. Uh, and I truly believe it saved the engine and the transmission transmission for sure. By the best look that I could have with a flashlight in the trailer at one o'clock in the morning, um, left front strut DOA. Um, something's binding in the left front wheel when you tighten the wheel all the way up. I don't know what, um, could be spindle, could be bearing, could be brakes. I don't know. Probably got to replace that axle, at least tear it apart. Check it out. Um, it did look like it was in one piece, but it's been smashed up pretty good. I did not see any visible damage to the engine or the transmission. We did, however, not try to start it put in gear or anything like that, just pull it into neutral. Um, so I have no idea, um, past that the radiator was not sitting in the mounts, but I think, I mean, I came around, I slapped the wall. So I think it just popped the radiator out. Dad's worried. It might've shifted some stuff. Um, but his radiator mount is just kind of like, uh, like the big C clampy type of deals on a bar. Um, the frame rail may or may not be moved a little bit. It was tweaked before. So it's really hard to see how well, um, it's, it's doing like that. Okay. Um, the right, the rear end, um, the right rear, the spindle's gonna need replaced. I could, could run it. I have ran the one before the one I showed you guys the video, video very, very, very beginning where it happened in Springport. Um, it grinds the bottom flat. So there's a, a hole on the bottom, uh, and a torsion rod comes in and then bushing squeeze it together. That, that is somebody's got ground flat because all those sparks, that's where they came from. Right. Um, so that spindle it's damaged. Uh, it's probably usable. It might become the spare. Um, it is going to need replaced. However, the strut on the right rear looks okay. We actually put that rim and tire back on to load the car, um, to tow it back up. Um, hub looked good or the, um, uh, drum looked good. Hub did not look good. Okay. Uh, left rear, uh, is going to need the, um, uh, at least one tow link, um, because it's bent up. The other one might be, um, I do not know if, um, the, uh, front control arms, front K member, anything like that. I don't know how any of that is. Um, I don't know when we are, um, going to look at it. Um, he races out of Scott and Misty Cassidy's garage. Uh, their son Dylan races. They are getting Dylan's mini wedge together. That's in the one stall. Um, Scott has his race car on the hoist on the other stall. Um, and there's another race car coming in there. Their season starts here in the next few weeks. Dad and I, I think we kind of agreed. We don't want to be in the way. Um, so maybe we'll bring it over here. If I get space in the pole barn cleaned out where we can pull it in, kind of take stock of what is broke, what isn't, uh, and go from there. Um, 
maybe we'll go over and pull the front end off in the trailer and look at it. I don't know. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be until we know what's wrong with it, but I will tell you guys and gals, I broke it. I'll fix it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I do. I, I will tell you from what I seen, I think that it is race. I think it's very fixable. Um, I think we can bend the mounts back out, maybe make new motor mounts. Um, the strut not worried about, we got more struts. Um, the steering, the the tie rod was bent too. I don't know if it got into the steering rack or anything like that. Um, I think all of that stuff I think is fixable. From what I could tell, the frame didn't look like it was that bad. Um, if the frame rail is bent a little bit, we could probably pull it back into place and then either redo it, um, tube it or anything like that. Um, but the rear end is definitely fine, um, and the front I think is fixable. I don't think I I see nothing that would tell would would tell me that car had the death sentence. So a hundred percent, I think the car is fixable, and I have every intention on fixing it um if nothing else for the selfish reason of uh, some bitch turns and i want to drive it at my local tracks just to see how well it does so if you're in the subscriber group you kind of know the setup stuff we did because we talked about it um but i want to test it out at my local tracks so if nothing else i want to fix it so i can at least go test and tune it um but dad you know gave me that opportunity to drive it so we are going to for sure um get it fixed so that when he is capable when his shoulder is when he gets the clear all clear and he's pain free in that that he can drive it again um i don't want to leave him high and dry uh he keeps doing this whole i don't know how many more years i got left so i want to make sure that he at least has you know if if it is this year he's healthy enough that he can get in it but if it's not i want to make sure that he has it for uh next year so because hey if it hits it doesn't cost anybody any money so yeah um and uh, mark eden says he saw a lot of 150 to 170 i truly honestly believe that 150 to 180 maybe is probably the limit for a restrictor now the thing is too is that it is just um it, it, it to me it honestly is one i've had people tell me that they made 205 208 and go to bristol and I made 136. And I'm here to tell you the difference between 136 and 200 is a lot. Okay. The difference between 230 and 270 is not as much as the difference between 130 and 175. Okay. I wasn't being pulled at all down the straightaway by guys who supposedly made 60, 70 horse more than me. Um, so that's why I like dyno numbers for me. It's, it's, I wanted the ego. I want to be able to say I make 250, 260, 270 out of a two liter neon. Hell yeah. I want to be able to say that. Right. But I would rather be able to make 228 and you know, the, the motor that I had made 228, but I made 200 wheel horsepower from 6,100 to 9,100. Um, and it was, it had a flat torque curve and there was not many guys who could pull harder than me, longer than me. Some Honda guys would make more power, but bro, it's uh like it, it's peaky. You know, if they're not geared quite right perfectly, mine, I got to be able I might only turn 75 at the end of a straightaway. I might turn 92 at the end of a straightaway because I don't have that gearing possibility. So yeah, Chad says I'm late, but here to hear about the stains and the fire suit. So I keep hearing this. All right. I keep hearing this. Probably shit yourself. Probably shit yourself. My brain, this is, I think this is an advantage. This is the ADHD. I process stuff really quickly. I process information really, really quickly. It's one of the things that make me a really good race car driver. And listen, you can say that's egotistical. That's fine. I led at Bristol. Okay. I get to say that right now. Okay. I'm a really good race car driver. Um, I can tell you what I was thinking the entire time. And until I slapped the wall and I was staring at that entire field, um, I was not worried. Um, the scariest part for me, Chad, and I said this earlier, was when I was parked at the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, oh, you know what I said I would do? And I got to do for you guys? Hold on. Let me pull this up. Uh, I told you guys I would show you because I know Lo I know Lewis is not going to. Um, let me help my mouse go. What the hell is going on? Bro. Where'd the mouse go? I'm not kidding you guys. The mouse like disappeared. Uh, 
just as I do race. I do bump and runs. Not sure if you're familiar with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're pretty cool. Uh, but we race on dirt and mud, rain or shine. Derby Dog Studios has them on their YouTube channel. I'm from Michigan, so that's really big here. Dude, Justin, where at Michigan? I'm sitting in Charlotte. Um, I'm not kidding you guys. This is the craziest thing. The mouse cursor has just disappeared off the screen. Like, things are getting highlighted. That is, it's the crit. What is going on? Okay, just, uh, I don't think this will interrupt anything, but we're, there we go. There we go. Just control, I'll delete it, right? Uh, but what I told you guys that I would do is I would show you um, the top row racing media in car, okay? Um, so this is the part and I can show you guys, um, I tried talking during the last one didn't work so well, but I will show you, um, when I started going down the track, okay. Um, and seeing that I was going to be sitting sideways, um, at the bottom of the racetrack with the entire field coming at me. Um, I knew that I was getting hit in the door. Um, as much as I, I hate to say that I knew that I was getting hit in the door and I, that was scary. Um, sitting there and you can, you, and I'm telling you, you're about to watch this video. Okay. Cause I'm going to show you. Right. Um, but you can watch me put my hand, take my hands off the wheel when I stop and put them in front of my face. And you will notice that when I start going down the racetrack, um, that I do not look left at all. Okay. Um, because I knew that I knew that I was going to get hit and I didn't want to watch it coming. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to show you the uh, top row racing media um, crash. Up. Okay. So the volume is really loud on this. So I apologize. This is <coughs> the top row racing media crash of the week. And this was, uh, I believe this was started for the checkers record podcast, which by the way, Chad, thanks for stopping in because I apologize that I was not, uh, um, uh, uh, I didn't stick around last night. I had to do a few things, had to help the wife put the kids to bed and stuff, but I appreciate all the love you guys gave me. Um, I really do. If you ever want me to talk, let me know. I'll br I can bring my own microphone and everything. <laughs> um, but this is the, um, in car video presented by Top Row Media. If you guys have not on Facebook, you should go uh, like their page. They are, uh, it's Lewis uh, Noakes. He's out uh, down by Indiana area, Niles, somewhere around that area, Michigan. Uh, he films at Springport and Kalamazoo and all that. He went down to Bristol and took a bunch of cameras. And so there's a bunch of in car cameras. He does not charge you for it. There's some other people out there that charge you for it. He puts a camera in the car if you wish. And he films it, edits it. He does put it on his YouTube, puts it on the Facebook, uh, stuff like that. But um, it's all free. Um, he does so much for um, uh, short track racing, and he does it all for free. Um, it, he does an amazing job. Super nice guy. He's a special education teacher. Okay, so super nice guy. Uh, but go like his page. Uh, he posts videos all the time. He likes to post the wrecks. Um, he puts cameras everywhere. He's going to be out to Springport every week. Uh, he does some of these big events and stuff like that. So he's got some really cool videos. He's got a bunch of us from Spring or from uh, Bristol. So go watch his stuff. But here is the crash of the week. So this is both myself and Nicholas Mead. Uh, and I'm not going to lie. Nicholas did an impressive amount of driving. You guys are going to see here. I apologize if this is stupid loud for you, but just turn it down a little bit. It's a minute 53.
This is really impressive. Right here, watch for it. Bam! There he goes. impressive uh mr mead um he legitimately almost drove out of that thing um if if you listen to that you hear him just, like he almost drove out of it i don't know how he was able like he's got so much left turned into that thing um almost drove out of it but if you go watch that clip um so top row is posted the one with just me but i wanted you guys to see um I wanted you guys to see uh, Nicholas's too, because that was impressive. He seriously almost saved that thing. Um, but, oh, hey, my little uh, key light over here died. Oh, well. So now it's going to be a little darker, okay? Um, but uh, he, if you watch my video, you can see I'm fighting it. It's a little loose already, and I think that was when it was starting to go. Because that's where you can see in the video where the two guys, they it almost looks like they're about to split me and I, I back up a little bit. Um, I think it was starting to drag and it was starting to go. Um, and then um, as I slide down it, first off, I want to point out, you guys can see, you can see how close Ketron was to me. I do not know how. Honestly, if I had a right rear, he probably would have hit it. If, I, if the right rear was still on it, he probably would have hit it. We were that close, okay? But as I slide down the hill, and who, what, you know what? I gotta, I gotta move this forward just a second. I gotta watch this one more time. Um, I'm gonna mute it because I'm gonna do it just for me. Uh, I'll show you guys in just a second because I think okay. So here it is. I don't know if I'd be able to to blow it up, but. I don't know who this is. All right, so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna put this back up here. Um, whoever that is, right in front of me, um, in there. Um, I don't know who that was, but you can watch in the other video in the Racing America video. I don't think I missed him by inches, so I don't know who that is. Um. Those were the two that I thought for sure. Like, as I come back around, he goes buzzing by me. I'm like, oh, God. And so I do not know how um, those got around. So uh, Lewis does not have mine posted yet. And Bo asked, he says he did an interview with him. Has he posted it yet? Uh, no. So I don't, I, I honestly, I don't know, Bo. I did see that he has, um, no, that's not Josh Richardson. Uh, that one right in front of me, there's blue on it. Josh doesn't have blue on his car. Um, I don't know if I can get this. Uh, here, let's back this up just a second. Because you can see it right there in front of me. It's the blue and red. That right there to the right. So I don't know who that is right here. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh... Looks like the 50 car. See, that's the thing. Like, it might be Cascioli, but because of the blue, but like, I don't know what Barkus's car looked like. That's the problem. But they were like, so because the other thing is, is that you can actually see Richardson go by quick because he was, he was real close to us. Um, this is probably mid pack at this point. So I don't know who it was. If, if you're watching and that was you, please speak up. Um, also, if any of you guys have an in-car camera that showed the sparks, the wreck showed you driving by me, please show me. Um, please. Um, I would love to see it. Love to see it. <laughs> uh, and if you're cool with it, send me a clip. Uh, Bark is 50 in those colors. Okay. I, it, it, I'm not, I don't doubt you guys. It absolutely could be. I'm not saying that it's not. 
Um, I just, I don't know what his car looked like down there. So yeah. So I almost wiped out Brandon Barkis apparently. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, if you do, if you have a video tag me in it, um, uh, especially if you have, uh, if you want to send me the clip of me with the record, whatever, I would love to show it and we'll give you some love. We'll tag your page and stuff like that. We'll help promote, um, all of that. I'm all for it. I'll tag you guys as YouTubes and stuff, uh, stuff like that. So no issue whatsoever, but I do know top row, uh, does have posted some links. Um, let's see. Uh, I think they just have them posted as reels for right this minute. Yes. Yeah, uh, so like a TikTok, but like, uh, here's Michael, uh, Mux G I forget, uh, Doug Peters, uh, Brandon Barkus. Um, Ooh, I wonder, maybe that's it. Maybe it'll show him missing my rec. Um, if so, I'll show you. I don't know how long this video is either. It'd be a minute because he started out kind of slow, I think. Um, but there's Brandon Barkus and P. Doxy. Uh, but it's like, take follow us for a couple laps. Uh, the big thing is, is that they're all on his YouTube channel. So uh, well, actually, we'll scoot over to uh, YouTube.com. And we will look up uh, top row racing media just real quick for you guys. Um, hey, it says there's five people watching on uh, on YouTube. It says, uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> um, let's just type in top row racing and see what show, what pops up. Top row racing media with 1.69K. Boy, he's got that video. He's got that music loud. All right. So um, so the checker and wrecker uh, with Brock Gannis from March 25th, 13 days ago, was the last thing he's got posted up there. Um, so uh, not right now. Uh, if you're calling me from a 616 number, I'm not answering, just so you know. Because uh, someone's calling me. But, uh, but yeah, he's got a bunch of driver interviews up here. Uh, he's got Paul Biddle's. Uh, from uh, in car from the winter warm up down at the Freedom Factory, so he did send some down there. He was at the um, uh, indoor, I think the Rumble, Enduro. Um, he's got a lot of really neat uh, racing videos. It's a lot of the in car stuff. Um, so yeah, go check it out. Um, and yeah, go, go check his page out. Uh, all his videos get posted on YouTube. Uh, that is the better place to see it. Um, but yeah. Got 1,700 videos posted over there. So, and yeah, he actually has um, um, uh, pink and blue, checker flag. Then that was probably Barkus at that point. So, um, but yeah, Top Row actually has some really good pictures um, as well that they posted from Facebook. So, um, yeah, I, Lewis is really, really good people. Um, the fun thing is, is that uh, I, was I was talking to him uh, last year. And I've said it along and, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. And I, I mean it every word of it. If you guys want to do uh, kind of what I'm doing here, if you want to do some video stuff, if you want to do a podcast, if you want to do content, you can reach out to me. I will give you advice. I will talk to you about it. Um, if you are trying to do the exact same thing I am, one of two things is going to happen. Um, you're going to be better at me, better than me at it. Or I'm going to be better than you at it. And the thing is, is that I don't believe anybody can do what I do. Um, and that might sound mean, but the tech, the interview, me, I don't think you can do it. But I think you can do something different. And that's awesome. And I want to encourage you and I want to help do that. So I can give you advice on gear. Woo. Shit. Um, I just broke the mountain off the table. Hold on. See? <laughs> don't buy cheap mic arms. That's actually on my list of things I want to spend some money on <laughs> microphone arm. Um, but I'll give you advice on gear. I'll give you stuff. I like that. And, uh, Lewis out to Springport was, uh, saying how like, yeah, like I, this and this, and then like the, the GoPros will die and stuff. And, and, you know, they don't last very long. And that's how he gets his cameras. And I was like, dude, I was like, I don't know if you know this, but you can take a portable power battery power pack and, um, just plug in USB C. I was like, so go get you like the 10,000 milliamp battery packs and just plug it in there. And you'll go from, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes to like three and a half hours. Like you'll run out of memory card before you do battery. And he did that. And so a lot of the racetrack stuff that we have where he will film an entire night of racing stuff. Um, he, he gives me the credit for that idea. So yeah, it, it, it's, and he doesn't, he does not charge the racers. He doesn't charge the tracks. Um, and like, he does not watermark his photos because he says, Hey, I'm just taking these pictures with my phone. So if guys want them and they want to use them, 
here you go. So yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, go check stuff out. And this is, uh, uh, let's see, I'll show you guys his, uh, this is the YouTube page. We'll see. Oh, I got to actually hit add to stage. Okay. But this is his YouTube page. Okay. Um, I know Facebook, once you mention that word, they don't really like it, uh, which actually, if we click on shorts, um, okay. So he doesn't have much shorts, um, there, but the videos, like, you know, here's his latest ones. Uh, Checkers Records podcast with with Brock Gannis. Probably this is probably the crash of the week or something like that. But Kalamazoo full racing program, an hour and thirty nine minutes and forty six seconds. Okay, um, interviews um, from he went over and was part of the five hundred uh, sprint car tour. Um, he got to do the media stuff for them. Um, but here's from a semi truck race at Kalamazoo, and let's just scroll way down here. Um, so here is the 2023 super shoe winner, uh, Brock Gannis with the rear wheel drive cars. Here's uh man of weather wax front wheel drive from super shoe and Scott Gates and drew Hosner. And here's Billy Yates, uh, in the rear wheel drive. Um, you know, here's Ryan Hufford. And so it's all just, you know, M40 full program, uh, Springport. He's out at Springport this year. Um, he is the, like track uh, videographer, all that out to Springport this year. So, yeah. <sighs> been almost two hours. An hour and 52 minutes that I've been talking to you guys. And the thing is, is that I feel like I can still talk for another two hours about Bristol and the stories that happened that I heard of, that I seen, um, things like that. So, I'm not telling you to leave. Hang around for another minute or so. Uh, but, I think we are going to wrap it up tonight. What I'm planning on doing is I'm going to reach out to the three uh, winners, the A, the B, and the C main winners. Um, from dude, Zach, hundred percent, dude. We already gave our, we already gave uh, Don his roses, man. Um, I'm going to reach out to Don. I'm going to reach out to Devin Dixon, and I'm going to reach out to Tom Gosser. Um, I'm going to try to get if Don's up for it. I'm going to try to get him on for Thursday. I think CBA is pretty baller. Um, transferring from the C through the B into the A. So I'd like to talk to Don first, uh, just because that's really cool. Tom, I'll get to him. I'm a little mad he's got three of them now. I ain't get one of them. So I'll get to Tom. Um, <laughs> uh, but we're going to reach out to Devin Dixon too. So I'm going to try Thursday to have one of them on as a guest. Uh, I won't lie to you guys. I'm going to try to get the other one on for next Tuesday and then probably next Thursday. Um, I do still, I'm still trying to get Paul Biddle on. I got to talk to him and try to get him on for the freedom factory win. And we do have to get, um, oh man, I feel like such an idiot. Uh, SCDRA winner. Was it Newman? Newman personnel. Um, so we do have those guys. And honestly, over the next few weeks, um, I've kind of lost the garage space at Earl's. He's, uh, sorting stuff out to be able to sell it. And I don't have the pole barn ready uh, for tech stuff. So over the next few weeks, I think we're just going to go, we're going to lean into the interviews. We're going to lean into being here in studio. We're going to do some interviews. So I think that is kind of the plan. So I'm going to reach out to all of those guys and I'm going to try to schedule the next few weeks. And I actually think all those guys, I'm on horsepower happenings. We've got that compact conversations. I think I got a different guest that I am going to try to get on for that for this month's Um compact conversations over on horsepower happenings. So yeah, I'm gonna reach out to him too, but we got a lot of interviews coming. Um, those are the big guys that I want to talk to. Um, and honestly, we might try to even sneak in a few more. Um, I'm going to do some work in the studio over the next few days and really try to get, I got to get carpet put down in here. Um, but once we get that done, I'm going to try to utilize this space as much as possible. We, we built this place, um, I got it. I should utilize it. So we're gonna start trying to do some interviews, even if I tape them and we can, we can play them later or something like that. Um, but yeah, so if you got somebody that you want me to talk to, hit me up, um, for a good reason. If you're just like, I'd love to talk, uh, give me a compelling reason. Cause we got a main B main C main winner who went CBA, right? We got a freedom factory winner. We got an SCDRA winner freeze winner. Um, we got some big names. So yeah. All right, last thing I got for you, and this is goofy, and I wasn't sure if I was actually going to uh, also get Andrew Smith. Yeah, Andrew was a uh, SCDRA champion this year. So, uh, I, and listen, I've got, you know, I interviewed Alan Height for the um, Horsepower Happenings um, uh, podcast. I'd love to talk to him for a lot longer. We went 17 minutes, and honestly, it was, I felt I just introduced him. So, yeah, there's, there's, I love doing these interviews, and, and, I've got to get more people doing them. I miss doing these, so we're going to do it. 
Uh, so I found something when I was down in Tennessee, and I thought it was ridiculously funny. And I bought one. They had cherry and they had regular. Uh, dude, yeah, Jimmy, man, I got it because you ended up winning. Um, uh, oh, you get was it? Oh, Jim, I think Jimmy gave me thumbs up. But fifty six nights, twenty wins, fifty top fives, forty top threes, thirty heat ones. Because uh, you ended up uh, champ. Jimmy, weren't you dirt car or wh what were you champ of? I forget. And and it's another personal dude. My brain's a little fried. Um, I found this in, in, in Tennessee though. And I thought it was hilarious. So they have a cherry flavored and they had regular that was just loaded. Uh, yeah, dude, Chris Jennings was just down in Bristol, Justin. So, uh, uh, UMPS, US, uh, I'm nationals. Sweet. Jimmy, I got you, man. We'll get you on again. We'll get you on again. We talked to you one time, man. We'll talk to you again. Cause the other thing, listen, I love talking to winners. I love talking to champions. But guys and gals, I love talking to the every guy, okay? I love talking to your B main guys, your C main guys, all that kind of stuff, okay? I love it. I do. Everybody has a story to tell, and I want to talk to them about it, okay? But I found this. <laughs> I brought home one of them, and I haven't tried it yet. I thought about cracking open tonight. This, and I'm sure you guys are not going to be able to see it because I can't zoom in, but this is Dr. Enough. E-N-U-F. Um, and the regular version says, Dr. Enough is enough. <laughs> so I just, I thought this was ridiculously funny. And I know that some of you guys are like, uh, Todd, we don't give a shit and that's fine. Um, but this is cherry flavored. It's herbal Dr. Enough since 1949. Uh, this one is with ginseng and guarana and it's also rich in vitamins. Um, yeah, I thought it was ridiculously funny. Dr. Enough. So I've got to come up with a video to make this where it's like, is it Dr. Pepper? Well, it's doctor enough, you know? So yeah, that's what I got. I cannot thank you all for being here um, enough tonight. I'm still 30 of you. We've carried so many people to watch just to hear me talk about Bristol. I love that place so much. And I know that we were calling this one the last lap because it looks like, it looks like it'll be the last time we get to go. But if we make it big on YouTube, guys and gals, with the other channel we want to start, and I got Cletus McFarland kind of money, we're going, and I'm going to put on a front-wheel drive-only show. You guys are going to hate tech. I'll tell you that right now, because some of you guys, if you ain't got a safe car, you ain't touching my track. But we make we make it rich. I, I, I'm, if I get where I'm worth seven figures, we'll spend half of it to go run a race at Bristol. Okay? Um, who knows? Maybe we'll see. Maybe I'll talk to the powers that be, and we can start some fundraising efforts. We can see what it would cost per entry fee. Maybe we can do this shit. You know, maybe we can do it again. And you know what? You know what the best part would be? Do you know what the best part would be? Is that if we can make this happen, if we can make this happen, if we can make this happen, if the FWD guys can make this happen, and I'm not talking discussion, I'm talking front wheel drive guys can make this shit happen, which has pretty much happened the last five times, right? then everybody will have to admit that the reason they're there because I'm goddamn front-wheel drive guys. And I kind of want to do that. So I don't know. Might take a year, two, three, four, five, but ladies and gentlemen, if I have anything to do with it, we will go back. Because a lot of people were saying how they had unfinished business before this race. And I kind of chuckled at a few of them because it was one where I was like, you know what? I don't know, man. Uh, far back as you were in the B main. I don't know if you really got unfinished business, but I'm telling you guys right now, we've been top five in times four out of five years. And we put a Dodge neon at the front of that pack this year. We led laps in a Dodge neon. So if, if anybody says that we got some unfinished business at that place, I think I can say that. And I think that I think that I want another crack at it. I think Tom Gosser would love to defend his title. He did kind of tell me, <laughs> Mike Walter Brewing, he's like, man, I kind of wish that we didn't again do it again, so I don't have to defend it. But listen, if he wants to be the four-time champ, right? So I got unfinished business with that place. I'm only 39 years old, so I got a lot of living left to do, and I'm going to try to drive me a Dodge Neon on that racetrack again. So if you're watching this and you are worth a hell of a lot of money, um, hit me up. Uh, about sponsoring a race. <laughs> so I think money's all we really need. So, yeah. Yeah, I know Fort Wheel Drive guys are the reason we're there. It's presented by Vores every year for a reason. So I love you guys. I truly and deeply mean that. Um, I got to meet uh, a few of you down at Bristol for the first time. I appreciate all the love. Um, 
all the love that you guys have shown. So many car, so many people have reached out since Bristol messages, posts, tags, um, comments. I've seen a lot of them. Um, and the, I, I feel the love from all across the world. Um, I really do. You guys, you guys don't know what you mean to me. Um, by being here, even if you're just watching cause you're laughing that I wrecked, that's fine. Um, I do truly and honestly appreciate each and every one of you guys. And we are about to have some fun. We're going to get some shit up on the website that you guys can buy some fun, flexible stuff. Go get you some indestructible boys. Okay. Um, but we're about to have some fun with a bunch of interviews. We got a lot of fun stuff coming and going down to Bristol running like we did is, is a little fire in me. We haven't had in a minute, so we're going to do some shit and I'm going to bring you guys with me. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. You guys are going to get some more of me from the studio Thursday. We're going to have one of those guys on. I'm going to reach out to a bunch of them. So I love y'all. Thanks for being here. Hit the like button. If you haven't on the way out, appreciate you. See you Thursday.